Praise God. Good morning again. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are. Oh, Father God, you are so precious. Thank you for giving us your kingdom and allowing us to make it our own. Oh, you're so great and so kind. The word does say it so plainly. For you so loved us that you gave us your only begotten son. Thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. Now, Father God, as we take this new adventure into your word, we know, Father God, that you are opening up doors and avenues in your word. Holy Spirit, open up our understanding so that we can grab hold to those things that the Father so desires for us to have. We love you and we appreciate you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a great and precious God. And we commit ourselves to you right now to be faithful doers of those things that you have asked of us and require of us, not out of our own effort, but because of the resources and the effort that you have supplied. You are the great supplier. Thank you, Father God. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, right now, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, and thanks be to God. I want you all to turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We have been, we are so far down this, I can't even think about going back and doing any kind of reprieve. We've been talking about fulfilling your function to purpose. We've talked about the different gifts that's on the inside of people. We've talked about uh, different people's desires, what it is that they may want in this world. We've talked about the different uh, how it is that we should be functioning together with one another. The one thing I want to start talking about today that is going to help you fulfill your function and for, to help you bring it all together. If your family, oh my goodness, thank you Lord Jesus, I never said it before, thank you Holy Spirit. If your family is in disarray, if you start to know who you are in Christ Jesus, you can go to God and make your request be made known unto God to bring your family together and make them whole. We have been studying on prayer on Wednesday nights, the different avenues of prayer. But when a man who has been justified, called righteous, because he is righteous, because God has made him righteous, and he, be, he or she begins to pray on behalf of his or her family. The Bible says that there is much power made available for that to come to pass in your life. But first, we got to wake you up. It's time to wake up. Because a lot of us don't know who we are. The world will make you think that you're imperfect. The world will make you think that you are flawed. Be flawed. F-L-A-W-E-D. Flawed. Be. You make mistakes too. How many of y'all ever heard that? But I sound all that. I understand all that. But it's time for you to really, really receive who you are. It's time for you to build your confidence up today.
That is my goal. That is my desire. That is my prayer. And that is the will of God for you to know who you are today in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look what it says. Uh, page flip. There you go. <laughs> no, it flip. Look what it says. Verse 34. 15 verse 34. You everybody there? It says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Awake to righteousness. Awake to it. The word awake the word awake, it don't mean you sleep and somebody trying to wake you up. It means to be in a stupor. You know how it is when somebody drunk and, and you can see they finna pass out or they finna go to sleep <laughs> and, you, and you wake them up. They wake up and they're uh, uh, and they're looking at you. Ah, but do you hear me talking to you? Yeah, I hear you talking to me. What? You so drunk. Oh, Rewind. Come back. It's the whole hour. The whole hour did. Wake up. <laughs> be, be tore up from the floor. You awake. But for all intents and purposes, you ain't. That's the way it is nowadays when it comes to people and knowing who they are in Christ Jesus. They actually really believe. They say, I'm a child of God. But then they want to turn right around and beat themselves up. Calling themselves stupid. Ever you moron. They talking to themselves. They want to, they want to allow other people to call them all kind of crazy names. And I'm miles of God, I'm miles of God saying, and, and you can be mad at me all you want. They call it y'all any of all kind of niggas, honkies, spicks, wetbacks. They and you, 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 you this, you that. They call each other uh, H's. Yeah, oh, just case some of y'all. Okay, whores. Cause the Bible say whore. They call each other all kind of itches, and you just put a B in front of the itches. They call each other all kind of names, and yet at the same time, God is saying. Wake up! Come out of your drunken stupor and awake to who you are. Righteous. I have declared that you are righteous. Not Ivory. God has declared you righteous. Uh-oh, here we go. Uh, I knew I was going to start fighting. Hit his road. You see, some of y'all's minds don't want to receive it. Go to Romans chapter 10. Let's go back to the beginning. For some of you all who do know this, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, for some of y'all who don't know this, this is how you get born again. This is how you get born again. Let's read verse 9. Chapter 10, verse 9. Lord, put these on. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Saved. Well, that just means I ain't going to hell. No, it means more than that. If you look up the word saved, it means nothing missing, nothing broken. That word also translates to the word peace or shalom, which means nothing missing, nothing broken. Also means to be saved from all hurt 
and harm. To be totally insecure. Reti. Secure. Notice how I broke it up. Secure in the hand of God. Why do you think King David said in the Psalms, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He's not fearing any evil. Why? Because he believes he is secure with in the arms of God. Why? For thy rod, thy staff, thy comfort me. He believed that. You are the righteousness of God, but only in Christ Jesus. Read on. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whoa, 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 I thought he was just talking about being saved. Notice how he puts righteousness first before saved. With the heart man believeth unto what? Righteousness. You don't deserve it. That's what grace is all about. It is God's unmerited favor. It is God's willingness to help you even when you didn't deserve it. Okay, y'all still there? You still with me? Go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Now we're gonna we're gonna lay a little bit of we done. I'm just laying a little bit of groundwork here before we get to the to the to the body of this. Because a lot of us, as we begin to walk this out, we I, 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 do, I know I have done some teaching on self-effort. I have. And you are required to put forth your best effort. But when your best effort runs out, what else is there? Think about it. When you are putting forth your best effort, to meet a need in your household, to meet a need in your church, to meet a need in your family. You prayed all you can pray. You have preached, you have talked all you can talk. You've done everything in your power, and yet there's still lack. Yet there's still insufficiency. Yet you've laid hands, I believe, that my son will be made whole. Sickness come out for him. Two seconds later. <clears throat> I'm running a fever. I'm hot. You just want to reach in and just grab the sickness out and then cast it off into the pit of hell. You want to. You've been trying to lay, some of us, we've tried to lay hands with self-effort. You are supposed to put forth effort because you are required to put forth the hand, but ain't you the one doing the healing. See, some of us, we have been trying to put forth too much, self, so much self-effort to meet the need and then still come them short and then we wonder why. And then we want to sit back and blame God and say, that stuff is work. You are supposed to put forth your best effort. Do not walk out of here and say, well, I'm going to just go to work today and my past, past Ivy said, I ain't got to put forth my best effort. Show up on the job and I'll put forth your best effort. In most places, they're going to follow you behind. <laughs> okay, Ephesians chapter 2, y'all. There, look what it says. Look at what it says. Verse 8. Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It is what? The gift of God. The book of Romans talks about how it's a free gift, which means you can't earn it. How do I know that? Verse, verse 9, not of works, least any man should boast. It ain't based on your works. The righteousness that you will receive, it ain't based on what you have done.
the righteousness that is of God, it ain't never going to be based on what you can do. Ever, ever. Why? Because you have been flawed. Notice I didn't say you are flawed. You have been flawed. Adam committed that sin. Go read Romans chapter 5 and chapter 6 where it says, By one man sin entered into the world. Or flawedness entered into the world. When it entered into the world by Adam, it made all of us come up under sin. Why would God have to include me into what Adam did? So when he sent Jesus, as a matter of fact, we, we got time. Go to Romans. Yeah, ain't, we ain't doing that right now. We got a whole bunch more time. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Uh oh, well, we, we, we hitting on something now, man. Look at Romans chapter 5. Look what it says. Verse 12. Verse 12. If you don't have your Bible, you need your Bible. We ain't teaching nothing else here besides the Bible. Nothing. So I, I got we got y'all got y'all Bibles in here. Talk about all y'all out there. Go get your Bible. It's in your Bible. No, no, it's a really, really good book if you just take time to read it. Look what it says in verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For that all, all have sinned. See, all have sinned. See, you are flawed. You're right. God had to count everybody up under sin. Why? Drop all the way down. Verse 17. We, we skipping over a couple things. We're going to go back and hit a couple, a couple of them in, in a second. For if by one man's offense, death reigned, by one much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? He goes on, he expounds it even more. Look at verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Glory to God. So it ain't based, you receiving righteousness ain't based on your works. It's based on the works of what Jesus did. Hear me carefully. Without Jesus, we all doomed. We're all in trouble. We all gonna end up in hell. Without Jesus, there is no such thing as righteousness. Think about how the world is going now. They constantly keep, every, every other year, they say, well, that's the old way of thinking. This is the new way of right thinking. They call it being politically correct. The world says, 50 some odd years ago, homosexuality, in the, in the dictionary, it was a clinical definition of being insane. But now it's the new way of living. It's the it's it's the uh, what they call it uh the uh the uh the new modern. It ain't the new modern. Bible's been saying for years it's still wrong. So it ain't based on your works. Abraham lied. How did Abraham lie? Ain't, there was no rules and regulations against lying. You there in Romans? Look what it says. In verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So you can't go say, hey, you committed a sin... They might not even know it's a sin. Use a little bitty old baby for an example. If a baby, when the baby starts walking, uh, and he's going to go to the refrigerator, and the refrigerator open, all he sees is, oh, that look like the same juice that my mama been giving me. Go get it. 
and all of a sudden the refrigerator door swings back and it shuts his hand up in there. Baby hurt. Ow! Ah, I just my juice. I saw the juice. He didn't know that, hey, maybe there's a little bit of gravity. The floor is unbalanced. Gravity took over and swung the door back. The baby didn't know that that might happen, but it still happened. Why? He didn't know. Some of us are so quick to try to judge everybody else. For me, I tell this, I tell the story all the time. When I tell this, tell this, tell this fact all the time. And for a while, I didn't know that not having sex before you get married was wrong. I didn't know that. I grew up in a household, the only people that I knew were probably having sex was my older brother, my sister, because she was getting pregnant, I knew she wasn't married, and my mom and dad. And nobody said sex is wrong. Nobody told me that. So as I got older, and I went, got older, I wanted to learn, learn about sex, and I started asking, well, what is sex? People told me, some, certain people in my family told me, yeah, you, 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 you're too young to know about that right now. So I set out for a discovery to try to find out what sex was myself. Glory to God. And went on a long path road of being captured and to, hey, you, you, want, you need sex, you need sex, you need sex, you need sex. Nobody never told me that sex outside of marriage was wrong. Nobody never told me that. Nobody. Even up until the point when I got married. I heard some preachers talking about it, but I was like, well, look at everybody else. All these folks doing it. It can't be wrong. Then when God got a hold of my heart and showed me, hey, I agree, that's wrong. Oh, it's wrong. Oh, Lord Jesus, but Lord, I've been, I did all that stuff in them years and them days and the weeks and the months. I agree, don't worry about it. I have forgiven you over there. Don't, don't even worry about that no more. Why? I didn't earn righteousness from that, but it was freely given to me. Glory to God, man. It was freely given to me. Watch what it said. Look what it said. Look what it said. You still there, Romans? You still there? Look at verse 19. Look at this. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made what? Righteous. Based on Ephesians again. Go back over there. Not of works. At least any man should. But it ain't based on you. It ain't based on you. It ain't based on you. Your righteousness is not based on your works. Don't go out of here and say, well, pastor said that I don't have to do any kind of works. You <laughs> don't do that. That ain't God. You still there? Well, you still there, Romans? I told y'all go back to Ephesians. Go back to Romans. Look at verse 6, chapter 6. <clears throat> Look at chapter 6. Look at verse 1. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Look at verse 2. Now. Just top part of verse 2. Now. <laughs> no. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So what does righteousness do now? When you receive your righteousness by faith, it says, hold on, I've been made righteous. That's beneath me. That's not who I am anymore. That, no. No. That's not who I am anymore. Satan will try to draw you back and say, but you know what you did just last week. But I'm the righteousness of God. But you know what you said last week. No, but I'm the righteousness of God. So it's still fighting. It's still the battlefield of the mind. You're still battling in your mind. Romans chapter 12. You're there, Romans. Go to Romans chapter 12. Yeah, Romans chapter 12. You're there, Romans. Look what it says. Verse 1. We should only turn a whole lot of scriptures today because you need this. Go back and read it again. Look what it says. I beseech you therefore, brother, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, 
that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Why do you think he said you present your body? Why? Because he has now given you a self-right, I mean, a, a righteous position. But it's in Christ Jesus. He's given you the ability to go live holy. He's given it to you. It ain't based on something you came up with. You can't read nowhere in the Bible where it says, Thus saith ivory thy God. Live holy. For I am the Lord thy God. I change not. No, it's not in there. It's not in there. I'm not talking about what I've told you. I'm talking about the position that God has told you. You can live holy because he's given it to you. You can make your body a living sacrifice. Why? Because he's given it to you. He's given you this gift. It's the free gift. I like to say the free gift is one big old package that you get at Christmas time. You get one you get a huge big old package. But in this one big old package, you got deliverance, you got safety, you got soundness of mind, you got healing, you got uh, a provision. You got supply. You got you. What, what? You got resources. You got good marriage, good family. You got all these different things in the package. You just have to go read, receive, and then walk it out. Call those things that be not as though they were. And when you call it, you it's gonna come to pass because you are speaking from the position that God has placed you in. It ain't got nothing to do with how you feel. Oh, goodness, man, come on. Grab it, man. Grab it, because you need this. You need this. Look what it says. Look what it says. And be not conformed to this world. So it tells you right off the bat right there. Don't go acting like the world. The world will try to say, well, see, you flawed. Oh, there you go. You think you Jesus now. No, oh, but I'm his little brother. What? Huh? Whoa! Blasphemy! You're going to hell for saying that. No. I'm his little brother. He has made me righteous. And be not conformed to this world. Here you go. Battlefield of the mind. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I told y'all some time ago what it says over the Good News Translation. To totally be changed in your mind from the world. The Nap 5 verse says come up with new ideas and the, the new concepts of what the kingdom brings. This is life in the kingdom. Knowing who you are. Know. Jesus told what did Jesus say to the 70, the 70 guys he sent out? When they came back, they said, Jesus, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They was totally confident that, that they was able to go cast out demons because Jesus told them they could. Jesus was so confident in who he was. Think about it. Uh, Jairus' daughter, he went to go heal that little girl, and they said, Jesus, hold on, she dead, ha, 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 they cried and started and stuff, and Jesus said, she ain't dead, she's sleeping. They started laughing at Jesus to scorn him. Jesus so confident that he was righteous, he said, all y'all get out, except for mom and daddy. Only you two believe. Why? Because they were the ones who had authority over that little girl. And he told uncles. He told grandmama. Man, you don't tell no grandmama to get out. But Jesus says, get out. Shut up and get out. He knew who he was. Think about Jesus growing up in this. When he start, first started reading, he started saying, I am. The righteousness that people are going to be believing on. I am the salvation that people are going to be believing in. I am 
the Son of God. That's why I've been talking to Daddy. I, they can't talk. I want them to be able to talk to Daddy just like me. I am the gateway. Oh, I received that for me. I got to believe it for me so that they can believe it. Lord Jesus. Come on, y'all. You got to get this. You got to get this. Why do you got to get this? Some of y'all still, after me been preaching it to you, you still sit up here fighting in your mind. But I know what I did. I know what I said. Yeah, baby. God has already made provision for you to be forgiven. He's already made it available so that you don't have to be broke, busted, and disgusted. He's already made provision. Why he's already made provision? Because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's already made provision. You are a child of God. Watch this. Go over to the book of Ephesians now. Go to the book of Ephesians. Go back to the book of Ephesians. Yeah, we Bible thumpers. Yeah, I believe this thing holy, totally, man. I believe it totally. Look, look what it says. Oh, my time is almost up, man. <laughs> look what it says this. Uh, uh, look, look at verse 10. But we want to pick up here next week. Because in a second. Look what it is. Look at verse 10. Get 10. Oh, y'all think y'all been staying in the spirit. Ephesians chapter 2. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Come on, y'all on my time, man. Catch up, catch up, catch up. Look what it says in verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Oh, Lord, see, you missed it. You receive the righteousness, and the righteousness, if you, stay, you stand firm in that righteousness, good works will come out of that. It ain't you going to try to come up with some good works. To try to get in Christ Jesus. You get in Christ Jesus by believing by faith that he is the Lord of your life. And you confess that when you step into that righteousness and you stay there, righteousness actions will come out of you. If you allow it to. That's why he said you created in, good, in Jesus Christ unto good works. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. He's ordained and he says you should be able to walk in holiness. You should be able to walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because I have provided it for you. God has provided it all for us. We ain't got to come up with nothing. Look what he says. Almost there. Come on, my time. My time. I got too many. Got too many. Look what he says. Verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. He's saying, hey, one time you was called uncircumcised. Why? Because you didn't have a covenant with God. You didn't have a covenant with God. By which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. They, the Jews, try to come up with different things that say, "Hey, you can before you can have a covenant with God, you got to go get circumcised. You got to come over and do these things to have a covenant with God." But look what God says: that at that time ye were without Christ. That was only provided because we didn't have Christ. Being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. He says, you didn't have no hope unless you did that. Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. Having no hope and without God in the world. What did verse 13 say? But now, now faith is. Now faith is. Now, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. 
You've been made near now. Everybody say, I have been made near by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am now in the body because of the blood. He shed his blood for me. The righteousness has been made available for you. That's why God, that's why Paul, the, through the apostle Paul, Jesus God says, awake to it. Awake to it. People have been walking around saying so much that you can't be like God. You can't act like God. And God said in Genesis, I want to create a person to look and act and talk just like me. I want somebody to think just like me. I want somebody to do what I do. Say how I say. Think like I think. <laughs> smell like I smell. Glory to God, man. How we been missing this? Now, if you get a hold of stuff like this, man, it would totally eradicate low self-esteem. Ain't gonna be no such thing as walking around talking about I got what's what's that the, the thing that they call now? Uh, they call it, uh, I'm bipolar. Ain't no such. How you gonna be bipolar with the stuff? With this stuff? Be taking all these different kind of Adderalls and this roll and that roll that causes more bleeding than anything else. End up dead, bleed. God said, why you here with me? Well, Lord Jesus, I had this bipolar problem, and they gave me that pill to call me be bleeding all over the place. Why don't you just take some of my word? Why don't you just receive the righteousness that I made available to you? Next week, we're going to pick up, and we're going to go find somebody else who did not deserve. They didn't deserve this righteousness. But yet, King David gave it to them. God gave us an example. He's like, well, I want to see this and I want to know about the Old Testament. God gave an example under the Old Testament. A whole bunch of folk who did not deserve the righteousness of God. And yet, at the same time, God made this grace available to them. Glory to God, man. Glory to God. I knows who I am now. I knows who I am. And for, for you to be able to fulfill your function while you're in this earth, you be able to just go around and hang out with people and it's like, no, I know who I am. I'm not going to let them, what they do affect me. But I'm going to convert them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ooh, ooh. I love this good, man. All oh, y'all sitting up here looking at me like, like, yo, you need to get this. You need to get this. This is not far, this is not so far-fetched. It's God. God said this. It's been made available by his blood. New Life Christ Center, come on out here so that you can learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. The right, doing this thing the right way. The right way. That's what this whole ministry is about. Teaching people how to do it the right way. Glory to God. I love y'all. See y'all next time.